Welcome back. If you've been following this series, you'll know that this Corolla back here burns a lot of oil. It's burning about a quart in 300 or so miles. If you haven't been following this series, I'm going to try to bring everybody up to speed in this video really quick. So this Corolla has the 1ZZ FE engine in it, and it is known for sometimes burning a lot of oil. Supposedly, the problem with the engine is it has low tension piston rings and it also has either too small or too few oil drain back holes in the piston. Now the problem doesn't occur in all of these engines, so it's unclear whether maybe it's neglect, using cheap oil, maybe driving only short trips, not frequent enough oil changes, but for whatever reason, some of these the oil drain back holes in the pistons get clogged up and the piston rings, the low tension rings, start sticking. So that is what I suspect is wrong with this one. So we started testing to see if we could free up those rings with different chemicals. We tried sea foam, we tried Marvel Mystery Oil, we tried motor flush, we changed the PCV valve to make sure it was not the PCV valve causing the oil burning. There are no noticeable external oil leaks, at least nothing that would show a loss of a quart in 300 miles. So many viewers pointed out that it could be the valve stem oil seals. So I wanted to eliminate that possibility. So in the previous video, we changed the valve stem oil seals on this car to eliminate that possibility. So in this video today, we're going to change the oil and filter because I want to have fresh oil with no additives. The oil in it right now actually has a little bit of the bar's oil stop leak in it. So we want to get completely fresh oil. We want a new filter. We want to make sure it's the right viscosity. We're using 5W30 full synthetic oil. 5W30 is what's recommended in this. You can use 10W30 in warm climates, and this is a relatively warm climate here, but 5W30 is more efficient, and I wanna use oil spec for the car to see if we can fix this problem and not mask it with thicker oils or you know additives that are just gonna kind of plug holes. We wanna see if we can really fix it. So to test whether or not it was the valve stem oil seals, we are going to change the oil and filter in it, and we're gonna drive it a bunch of miles and see if it's using oil. Now, if it does continue to use oil, now that we've changed the valve stem oil seals, we can pretty much guarantee it is the piston rings and the oil drain back holes in the pistons. Now, I know a lot of you think I'm just wasting money and throwing away so much money on this car that I could have just done the piston ring job and been done with it, and I could have, but thankfully, you guys are helping me with this by watching these videos and sharing these videos. These videos are actually making enough money to cover the cost of all the chemicals and experiments we're doing here. The point of these experiments is to do this as cheaply and easily as possible. So since basically these experiments are funded by you out there, I'm able to do this for free. So hopefully by doing these videos, viewers out there will be able to see, hey, I don't necessarily have to spend thousand dollars or x amount of dollars to have my engine rebuilt so that i don't use oil anymore i can just buy a b or c additive if any of them work and the problem will be solved so i'm going to go through as many chemicals as possible we've been trying to use the cheaper chemicals because that's the way you want to go about it right use the cheapest chemical possible if one of the chemicals will work so we've used sea foam you know it's like six or seven bucks a can at walmart or wherever Marvel Mystery Oil, it's actually even cheaper, I believe. Motor Flush is pretty cheap. And we'll probably go up in additive cost as we go through them. We want to find out, you know, the most economical, the most practical additive to add to do this without having to spend a whole bunch of money on your car. So hopefully one of these additives will work. If not, if none of the additives work, my hope is to tear down the engine and redo the rings maybe replace the pistons or whatever it takes to get the oil to stop burning. Anyway, let's get the oil changed.
I just wanted to point out that I don't have a crush washer on this. It didn't have one when I got the car and it wasn't leaking oil, so I didn't put one back. Why add a crush washer if it's not necessary? No! A lot of people say I should fill this up with oil first. And honestly, I mean, I could do that, obviously because this holds the oil filter upright like that. So it wouldn't drain out. A lot of them, you know, you put on sideways, but I just don't want to deal with the mess and the extra step. So what I do, which I think I never actually caught it on video because I don't think of it when I'm filming, I always think of it as soon as I'm done is I fill the car up, I check the oil, I run the engine and then I check the oil again and top off as needed after it circulates through the filter and all. Let's go ahead and fill this up. Somebody said there's a TSB out there that recommends you actually overfill, but that would kind of throw off our experiments. So I want to keep it right at the lines if possible. I always let it drain down for a minute or two. We are on the dipstick. Now that is almost to the full line, but since we're on ramps, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the ramps, let the engine run a second, park it on level ground, check it and add again. All right, this is pretty level. Okay. About a quarter of an inch below full there. Another reason I can't change to a thicker viscosity too, aside from what I've mentioned, is we've been using 5W30 since the beginning of the experiments. And if I change now, it would throw everything off. So got to stick with the 5W30 until the end of the line. Let's give it a minute to drain down. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see what we got. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Best you can. There's like a millimeter above the full dot.
Now all we need to do is reset the tripometer to zero and start checking the oil periodically. Let's reset trip B. So we're resetting trip B to zero. Check the actual mileage just in case we lose the trip B. Now let's start driving it. Three hundred and one point one miles, one eighty three six thirty one. The car's been parked for at least five minutes, probably about six or eight minutes, maybe ten minutes. All the oil has had a chance to drain down into the crankcase, so let's pull the dipstick. Oh, and you can see we're parked on the flat, so exactly where we were the first time we checked the oil. Okay. Hopefully you can see this. After 300 miles, we are about exactly halfway down on the dipstick. Let's do this again. I'll see it thick right there and then a thin line right where my fingernail is. Let me put it in and let it sit for a second. So clean it off, put it in, let it sit for a second or five, pull it back out. I don't know, what do y'all think? All right, let me, let me see if this line, does that smear? Yep, that line goes away. So there was definitely a line midway, and then like the heavier oil just seems to be lingering here at the end. I don't know. You tell me, was that halfway or is that down here a quarter up from the bottom dot? Well, regardless, let's add some oil until we get it up to the top dot there and see how much it used in 300 miles. So in this container, we have a little less than a quart. There's the quart mark, and we're right there. This oil jug is about 70 degrees, so it pretty much got all the oil out of it. So we'll just let that drain down in there for a couple of minutes and pull the dipstick again. All right, it's been about three minutes. I'll go ahead and pull the dipstick again. Wow. So we got perfectly back to the top dot with just a little less than a quart. Hopefully you can see that. So what does that mean? Well, we're definitely still using oil. A little less than a quart in 300 miles, but I think it has improved. Historically, we have gone from the top dot to the bottom dot in 300 miles. And this time we only went to, you know, maybe a quarter from the bottom dot, maybe a half, it was hard to tell. Regardless, we used a little less than a quart in 300 miles, which is definitely an improvement. 
So I don't know, what would that be, 10 or 20 percent? I believe one of you in the comments, in fact I know one of you in the comments said they thought changing the valve stem seals would be a 20 percent improvement, but that was all. So kudos to you. The valve stem seals did help a little bit, but that is not the reason for the bulk of the oil burning. So quick recap on what we have eliminated. We know there are no major external leaks on the engine. We've changed the PCV valve. PCV valve is working. We have now changed the valve stem oil seals. It is not the valve stem oil seals. If it is not the piston rings and oil drain back holes in the pistons, what else could it be? I'm saying it's the piston rings. So it's now time to get back to the chemicals and see if we can find something that will fix the stuck piston rings and maybe clean out those oil drain back holes. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more in this series, check out this playlist right here. And up here is a video that YouTube thinks you'd like.